Switching gears to the science, and I use that in the, the loosest term possible, the science of, uh, of global um, climate change. Our next guest is a physicist. He says carbon dioxide emissions uh, are something that, that uh, the world has seen for its entire history uh, and can actually be beneficial to an ecosystem rather than a burden. Uh, he argues that rising CO2 levels are only very weakly linked uh, to rising temperatures uh, and actually would increase uh, productivity. Uh, he wrote a big piece uh, with a, another a person that was actually on Apollo 17, one of the astronauts, um, uh, in the Wall Street Journal a week or two ago uh, that we're going to show you a shot of. But uh, he's Professor William uh, Happer of Princeton University, uh, who co-wrote uh, the article in the journal called In Defense of Carbon Dioxide. It appeared in the journal um, a couple of weeks ago uh, with Dr. Harrison Schmidt. And you're a, phys a physicist, so we're immediately going to hear that you're not really... Um, you, you don't have enough background to be judging uh, climate science at this point, and that 98% of climate scientists say there is a link between carbon dioxide and warming. You say there's not, or a very weak link. Well, you can look at the record, geological record, and, uh, you know, we have proxies for carbon dioxide over millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. And we're at 400 parts per million. Right. In the past, we've seen what type of levels in the past? 4,000. 4,000 parts yeah, per million. Yeah. All right. Oh, but now, but I now, saw, hold on, I saw Al Gore say these are the highest levels in human history. If you look at the length, if you look at the age of the Earth, and represented in hours of a day, the Earth is 24 hours old, man has been around for 11 seconds out of the 24 hours. So it's true that we haven't been at 400 parts per million, but we've been at 1,000 parts per million, we've been at 4,000 parts per million in the Phanerozoic era, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Was there, did you see warming, and do we know whether the warming came before the CO2 levels went up or a as a result of the CO2 level? Well, the Earth is almost always warming or cooling. Uh, the most dramatic uh, example of that is this uh, series of ice ages that we're living through in the last few million years. But during that time, uh, for, for sure, there is a correlation between CO2 and temperature, but temperature always changes first, and then CO2 follows. Well, that, that, that doesn't help. Here's, a, here's one of the quotes from the, uh, uh, from the piece, and we'll also hopefully we can look at a couple of charts. The cessation of observed global warming for the past decade has shown how exaggerated NASA and other uh, computer predictions of warming have been and how little uh, they correlate. I hope we can look at, has there been any global temperature increase since 1998? No. And that's a, you can see that plotted. By, by objective scientific organization. Yes, there are many uh, records. There are surface records, there are satellite, satellite records. records. Yes. Lancet. Now, considering that CO2 has increased every year since the concentration since 1998, I have seen them go back, the computer models, I've seen them go back to try to explain why there's been no warming since mm -hmm. 1998. And the latest is that there's a, a layer in the middle of the ocean that's absorbing more heat than normal. Have you seen? Have yes, you seen I, I've, I've seen that, yeah. And, and I've also, they'll also say that 15 years is too short a period to, to, to say that it's not happening. And yet their entire thesis is based on 150 years of warming out of a 4 billion year old planet. I didn't yes. need you here, I don't think. Let's look at it. What he said. Yeah. 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 Look at the defense attorney. I wasn't yeah. going to let you get to the point. I'm just trying to make the point that CO2 is not a demon. I wasn't going to let you get to the point where you're saying a thousand parts per million would actually help the planet. That's, that's your thesis, is it not? Oh, yes. I think a thousand parts per million would be better for the planet. Well, how? Well, agricultural productivity is already going up from the small amount of CO2 increase we've already had. If you look around uh, the world, you find many greenhouse operators who put in several thousand parts per million into their greenhouses. Into their greenhouses. Well, people don't want to live in those greenhouses, right? I mean, the, 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 so the data would be, Would there be any negative effects of, of, of breathing a thousand parts per million? No, CO2? absolutely what are you talking not. About? You don't want to live there. A thousand parts not. per million? Well, no, no, hold on. All I was going to suggest, and, and I'm not a scientist and I'm not an expert on this, so it's even, it's, I will admit it's hard for me to push back, um, uh -huh. but I, I read, and... The readings would suggest that we haven't had this amount of carbon while humans have been around. So you, we've talked about a lot of data yeah. over a very long you are period of time. .04%. But we're not talking about a period where we've been around and we're, we're here and what our impact is or is not. Well, our primate ancestors were here when CO2 levels were 3,000 parts per million. That was roughly uh, 70, 80 million years ago. That's when we evolved. Not that long ago on a 4 And uh, so it was 10 times what it is now. And 
We also uh, let our sailors and submarines uh, live in atmospheres that are several thousand parts per million. P Professor, uh, what, can you explain to me why well-intentioned people that are, I, I can't imagine that they, um, that if, if we go another five or six years where, where temperatures don't rise, they're going to have to revisit all of these models because it's going to be obvious that the, the anecdotal evidence isn't supporting the model that they've done. Will they go back and revisit it and, and maybe say, gosh, maybe we were wrong? What, why are, what is it that causes it to be such a zealous, sort of almost a secular religion with these people? Well, I think they already are revisiting the models, and uh, many of them are saying they probably overestimated, uh, you know, numbers of many numbers in the models. You know, the models are extremely complicated. You know, you have the sun, you have the cooling, you have water vapor. complicated. Water vapor uh, isn't a, pro isn't a, a product yeah. of the hydrocarbon well, in But when people case, talk about uh, the increase in, 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 in ocean levels, when you see these images uh, up in Alaska or of Greenland. Of the receding glaciers. Of the receding glaciers. Most of which receded well, prior to 1900. How, yeah. how, do you, how, do you, how do you explain that, or, or, or do you write that off? What's the... Well, of course. I'm just telling you course, as, a, as a spectator course, here. Yes, yes. This is okay. what I see. This is what yeah. I read, and I, I, and I, I need to understand what to think of it because you're you're telling me to think sure. of it very differently it. than the way it's being portrayed. But, yeah, you, you should you should make a trip to Glacier Bay, and uh, that's very impressive. The glaciers there are all gone, and uh, they disappeared in the 1800s. In fact, that was one of the most famous trips of John Muir, the founder of the Sierra. Club was to visit Glacier Bay in 1879, and he pointed out all the glaciers were gone. That was long before there was any increase of CO2. Oh, oh, so, so basically, to summarize, the stat that we keep seeing of 97 percent of climate scientists, they're wrong, and we should, don't worry, be happy, burn, burn, burn. Is that the bottom line? Well, uh, first of all, the, the statistics on the 97 percent, uh, are a little phony. You know, if you look at the questions, they are, does CO2 affect the climate? I would say yes. Yeah, so I would be part of the 97 You wouldn't be asked because you're a physicist, though. Uh, <laughs> so they don't ask the question, they don't, let's freak you know, out you, you and can not design burn a poll carbon. to get any answer you wish. What are, the, okay. what are the claims you're hearing that we're having these severe storms across the world, hurricanes and sandy and stuff because of six, climate change? Six, is, that, is that true? That's, or is that, that, that's even more, more preposterous than the, the link Well, yeah, you can, you can look at the data. There's no evidence in the data. So there's no evidence that we're having no bigger storms because mm -hmm. of this? There were three storms that hit the East Coast, New York, that were twice as strong as Sandy in one year, mm -hmm. in 1954, and that's only how many years ago. Mm -hmm. And we have guys like Bloomberg saying vote for President Obama because of Sandy, because of climate change. We just had a tornado. I made the, this point earlier today. We had a bad tornado in the last couple of days down in Texas, but it's a 60-year low right now in terms of tornado activity. In terms of hurricanes, it's about an eight-year low, or it's never been eight years where we haven't had a, a Category 5 or 4 or 5 something greater than three hit land. So it's never been this long, eight years. Yeah, you've got, if, if, a, if an adverse climate event occurs anywhere in the globe, you're gonna read about it in the New York Times. You're gonna read about flooding in Pakistan and they're gonna attribute that. My, your entire life, there have been climate so, events. So that we're talking about before, why they keep, been, then why does this keep on getting repeated and repeated? I, mean, will you, I don't know. I don't, why do you I, think I, they keep on right, right, this story? It's not just the New York Times. It's just about every... Er, it, but every article I've read... It's, read, it's most scientists. But they take the models, they take where you're going to be, and then they uh, extrapolate where the tides will be, oh, where the is, ocean is, levels will be. It is most scientists. It's not most scientists. like a minority? Not most scientists. You don't feel like a minority? Well, a small minority. I think if you honestly poll the scientists, you have found about half are on my side.